everyone, Christina here. Now you might be familiar with me from the Ohm Tech YouTube channel. I have recently created my own channel where I hope to share some of my DIYs, handmade tutorials, and video shorts. Oh, and also unboxing videos in the near future. So this video is going to be different from my norm. I am going to be going over some of the common questions I get, especially about Ohm Tech and my experience. So I will be touching base on that. And I did have the pleasure of speaking with some people in different communities about their lasers and what they really liked about them. So I will be giving you some other options if you're looking at researching and trying to find the best fit for you. Now, please note, this is also based off my personal experience and what I've been through. Everybody has a different opinion and thought on, you know, the different machines that are out there. So again, I cannot stress enough to just make sure that you do your research and the best way to go about doing it is join those communities and speak with people who have different machines, especially the machines that you're looking into. Aside from this video, I will be kind of providing a little questionnaire that you can download and print to kind of go over some of the questions that you should ask yourself when you're starting out. I'm just going to do a little intro now about, you know, me and my history just to kind of give you an idea of my background and where I'm coming from. So I am a freelance illustrator, designer. Um, I do websites, graphic design, all that kind of stuff. I originally left my job a couple years back because I really wanted to go on my own and explore the possibilities of the freelance world. When I left, I did have a lot of work lined up, especially for web design. And unfortunately, not even two weeks later, the pandemic hit and I lost all my income streams overnight. So as a last ditch effort, I actually got my laser and that was actually a life changing opportunity for me. Now, not only did it become a life-changing opportunity as far as me now taking my art and design to a whole new level by creating products and files, but it also allowed me to become a part of a community that I really, really love. Please keep in mind that if you are in the researching phase, there are some things that you should be considering. One of the biggest things I always tell people is budget. It's great to have a budget and a plan in mind because this is going to tell you what you can afford as far as a laser goes. And if you're only approved for a few thousand dollars, chances are you're probably not going to want a $15,000 laser as great as it would sound. Now, maybe you want to hold off and wait until you have the budget for that, which is completely fine. However, there are a lot of people out there who dip their toes in the water by purchasing either a cheaper laser or more of a hobbyist machine, and then they upgrade later as time goes on and they pay their machines off. The second thing to consider, other than your budget, is what kind of space do you have for this machine? Are you looking to start as a hobby or a business? Are you looking to grow your business or get into something new? Another point I would like to stress is customer service. Are you looking for, you know, doing it yourself and, you know, looking in forums and watching videos to kind of get a feel for your machine? Or are you looking for somebody to fly out and help you if there's ever an issue? Now, the 60 watt that I got was actually at the top of my budget at that time. So, <laughs> I was just kind of a little bit nervous because I wasn't really sure what to expect. And within that budget, I did also include the inline fan upgrade, which I don't know if you can see over there, but I have the inline fan and I also had a um, double walled tubing that I got because I do have family members who are asthmatic and I was worried about fumes. So that was all included with this budget. I also really liked the ability to customize my machine as I go and upgrade it as I go. I knew the parts that I was putting into my machine, I could, you know, finagle it how I wanted to see fit and it worked. You know, I'm not afraid to go in there and play around with it. It's wide open. You can pretty much see everything. Now, the other part that I often get asked a lot is, you know, did you ever have an experience with the customer service? So I did have two experiences with Ohm Tech's customer service and both of them were very positive results. Now, I did have a 60 watt before this one, and it arrived crushed thanks to the LTL carrier. So in that situation, I left Ohm Tech voicemails and sent them some emails with photos, and they responded within a day or two, and we got rolling on getting a new machine. My second situation that I ran into was when I got my fiber, which I actually got back in the fall. When I got my fiber, the USB that came with it was corrupt. It was not reading anything. 
So, you know, I actually, I got a free, like, I think 45 minute tech call with Ohm Tech. I just put my ticket in because I wasn't really in any rush. And within 10 minutes, they actually had a file uploaded online that I could download and boom, program worked fine, no issues since. And most of my issues other than that were either operator error or bad material. So I would just post in the Ohm Tech group if it was something like, hey, like, why am I getting so much char? Or, you know, why is it skewed and blah, 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 blah. And usually they were able to solve the issue. So when I joined the Ohm Tech community, what I really liked about them is I think there were 300 people in that group at the time and it was on Facebook. So I joined the community and I was speaking with people who were, you know, everyday people, the admins are just normal people. And, you know, they were like, you know, hey, do you have any questions? And I felt like it was very personable. And, you know, I was, wasn't was really sure what I was getting into. You know, I was kind of, you know, researching Glowforge at first, then jumped into Ohm Tech. But, you know, they were talking about all these upgrades and I was like getting a little overwhelmed. And one of the admins was so kind to actually send me a video of his setup. You know, and he's not even an Ohm Tech rep, mind you, you know, there. <laughs> These people aren't even Ohm Tech reps. They're just nice everyday people who wanna help and contribute to the laser community, which I thought was awesome. You know, as I started learning more and kind of going through the group, I was like, you know, this is the company I really wanna support because I feel like I can understand their value. And overall, my experience was very, very positive from the community. Now that I've actually gone over the pros and what I really like about Ohm Tech, let's talk about some of the other laser companies that are out there. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth because I really can't speak to experience from those machines as much as I would love to. Um, <laughs> so first off, let's talk about Glowforge. Now, mind you, when I was researching lasers, Glowforge was really what got me into lasers. It was the first company that I ever heard of that had a laser. And at that point in time, I thought it was the only option on the market. So I did join some Glowforge communities. Now, coming from a Cricut and Silhouette background, I really liked how Glowforge was truly advertised as being plug and play. The software was cloud-based, so to me, that just kind of reminded me of like how Cricut Design Space works. And I was like, you know, I could get down with that. I have some experience with Design Space. It shouldn't be too difficult. Now, the only downfall when it comes to cloud-based software is if you have blotchy internet or issues with your internet, you're down, you can't produce, you can't, you know, work. And I will say, living in the middle of nowhere, when our internet goes down, it could be down for days, sometimes weeks. So to me, like that was just kind of a risk I wasn't sure if I wanted to take, but I still kept it in mind as I was researching and speaking with users. Now, the other point I really liked is if you're new and you're starting out, a Glowforge is a great hobbyist machine. If you're not looking to invest thousands and thousands on this top of the line, you know, business model, a Glowforge can help you dip your toes in the water and learn about lasers. They're also a lot smaller than a lot of the lasers out there. You know, I think it's a 60 pound unit compared to a 300 pound unit. You can put it on a desk, you can put it in your office, providing you have the right ventilation. So I really did like that concept of how it would fit in an office environment. Last off is what you see is what you get. You know, you don't have to worry about all these external components, buying all these chillers. I do believe you can do the inline fan upgrade if you choose. But other than that, it's all kind of right there. And because everything is right there, you don't really have to worry about purchasing all these add-ons and upgrades. So that might be very beneficial for somebody who is starting out. They're looking to start it as a hobby, something very simple like plug and play. Don't really need to learn all the laser terminology and software. So that might be a really good option for somebody in that situation. I joined the Eon group and what I really liked about Eon is they had a phenomenal reputation of really, really good customer service. Now I have quite a few friends who have Nero machines and they all speak super highly of them. They mentioned, you know, if they have an issue, they've had people fly out, they've had parts overnighted. The customer service is really top notch. So if you're looking for a machine that comes with a good quality product, great customer service, all the support, definitely check out Eon. Now, aside from all of that, you don't really need to tinker with it. Everything's there. You don't need to worry about going with an external chiller because one is already built into it. The parts are also closed off, so you don't have to worry about debris and all that gunk going into your machine components, which is also really nice, especially you know for maintenance purposes. They also do scheduling and personal one-on-one -on -one training, which is really awesome, especially if you're new and starting out. 
And then another part that they really, really mentioned to stress on is you had communications every step of the way. So whereas, you know, you're, purchase, you're making a big purchase, you have not only the customer support backing this product and this machine, but you also have the training that goes with it. You know, you have, they're standing by their product and that's really, really awesome to see. One of the other benefits of Eon, from what I'm also told, while they do initially import their machines from China, they do rewire it and rework it so it fits US standards. And that is a really awesome point because you know, you know you're getting a machine that has been gone through, it's been tested, it's been troubleshot, so you're less likely to hopefully have any issues along the way. Now the last community I joined was the Thunder community. And they also had a very phenomenal reputation for having a good quality product and good customer service, very similar to Eon. So I really liked that. Now, from what my friends have also told me, what they really liked that made them sway towards Thunder is they liked how the company was very active online, especially on social media. The company would post, I believe, YouTube videos. They were interacting with people on a day-to-day -day basis. And for some people, that really hit home. Now, going on the whole approach of them having a really good online presence, especially with social media, they also have a really phenomenal knowledge base. And for somebody, especially like me, where like I like the whole DIY approach, having a knowledge base and giving you some point of perspective can help you troubleshoot as you're moving forward with your machine. So that's a really awesome option that they have all this documentation fleshed out for you. Another thing that my friends really loved was the pass-through option. And another awesome point is similar to Ohm Tech with Thunder, you can also upgrade it if you so choose. While it does work right out of the box, there are some people who mentioned that they really do enjoy doing the inline fan or the air assist upgrade. So that is also a possibility. You can't upgrade a Thunder. And one last point I do really want to point out because Sometimes it's just like bothers me. What can you make on an ohm tech that you, you know, can't make with another machine or vice versa? And, you know, I feel like, you know, if you have your machine dialed in, you're, you know, making a quality product, you know, you can't tell if that product is made on an ohm tech, a Glowforge, a Mira, or a Thunder. I've had people say to me, wow, you made that on an ohm tech? And it's like, well, I can pretty much do what you can do. I mean, there are obviously machine differences, but, I do feel like there's often a misrepresentation of ohm tech being, you know, budgety. I feel like it's just really unfair that they get that rep because there's a lot of people out there who have ohm techs or, you know, what they also call Chinese lasers, and they are fantastic working units. Again, it is more DIY and tinkering involved, but once you get it up and running, I feel like the possibilities are truly endless. So hopefully this video has helped inspire you during your laser research phase. Again, like I said, I can't really speak to other companies because I don't have a different machine. I only have experience with ohm techs. So a lot of you know these points that I'm calling out in this video are from me speaking with members, are of me speaking with different people in the communities. Just as the admins in the ohm tech group helped me out when I first started, I would like to help other people out as well. Yeah, I hope that you stick around my channel and find some of these videos helpful and I'll see you around.